Pod Jacked Episode 5. Awful Wingman. Or Awful Wingman. Either way. So usually on this channel I talk about female nature. Mostly it's about women. Every once in a while I will talk about shit that bothers me. Because you know guys, you know, definitely more tallable than females. But one of the things that pisses me off about guys is lack of loyalty. A lot of men out there, most men out there, I don't care who they are, they can say they're your best friend, they can say they're your brother. Guys will say, I'm your brother, man. I'm your best friend. But when it comes to pussy, and not even good pussy, not even like hot pussy, just even bad pussy, most dudes will stab you in your ass just to go behind your back or cock block you. And I've had this shit happen to me for a long time. First, I want to start out by saying that the dude I talked about in the last two episodes that called me his best friend, he did this to me first. Now, this is back in the MySpace days. This is something I forgot to mention in the last episode. There was this girl I was talking to on MySpace. She was real pretty. And she was probably fake, looking back at it now. But she had multiple pictures. So we're chatting online one day. And she's like, hey, your friend messaged me the other day. I said, who? And she said his name. I said, what do you say? She said, let me read. She goes, oh, he said, um, you're really gorgeous, by the way. I just want to let you know. Now, I wasn't mad at this, but it did bother me. Because I was like, what? Why would he do that? So when we talked like the next day, I said, hey, did you message? And I said her name. And at first, he tried to play dumb and said, huh? I said, oh, I guess she's lying. She told me that she, you messaged her a while ago and said, he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that was like, he tried to dismiss it, like, oh, yeah, that was a week ago. I said, but why would you do that, though? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, you have like a hundred girls in your MySpace that you're talking to. I don't, I never did that to you. And I'm only talking to one girl. And the one girl that I'm talking to, you decide to like go behind my back and message. And he's like, what are you talking about? I said, you keep acting dumb. He's like, yeah, but all I did was give her a compliment. I said, you mean to tell me you don't want nothing in return? He goes, no. I said, so you just give girls compliments all day and you don't want nothing. What are you? T- I was like, what the hell's going on with you? And he's like, I realize when a lot of dudes, I'm going to be doing a, a, a funny voice in this episode. A lot of dudes, when you call them out for being a cock block or a backstabber, their voice gets like high pitch. You know, they start, they're like, they kind of sound like this. What are you talking about, man? Huh? No, man. No, I, I didn't do that. Huh? So even though we were talking online, that's what I imagine sounded in my head. And he was like, you don't own her. And I said, okay, you're right. I don't own her. But my whole point is you have like a hundred girls you talk to, right? Don't you have a hundred girls you talk to? I never once went to your MySpace and said, okay, I'm going to, and, and I was like, and you didn't even tell me about it. I mean, not to say you're right. I don't own her, but you figure, hey, at least, hey, man, do you mind if I message her or something? Or hey, are you still, are you, are you seriously trying to talk to her? Because I'm interested. It's like you're talking to a hundred girls. I never once thought about messaging any of them. And he had a lot of girls on his list from like Chicago. He had people. He had girls on the list from LA. Girls who he was never going to meet. Like he met in chat rooms and shit, and random places. He was never going to see, and he had the nerve to do that shit. And he was like, you acting weird, man. You acting crazy. I don't understand what's going on in you. I said, because. I said, you're right. I don't fucking own her. But it's like, you knew I was talking to her. And even if I don't have a chance with her. So obviously, that means that he doesn't respect me. The guy's going to sit there and say, oh, you're my best friend, man. You're my best friend. And you're like a brother to me. But you're going to sit there and do that shit? And even if you're right, even if in your head you say, okay, he doesn't have a chance. Ain't no way that she's going to meet him. Okay, even if you're right, let her, let her decide that. That's not up to you. And he was like, I don't understand, man. You acting crazy, man. I don't understand. I said, why, why the fuck would you do that? So let's say you had a girlfriend, right? Now let's say, and if it's different, you know, you with her, you fucking, even though it's a, kind of different, let's say I messaged her behind your back and I said, hey, I just want to let you know that I think, I, I think you're really gorgeous. And then you start talking to your girlfriend. She's like, oh, your buddy messaged me the other day. Who? Josh. What'd he say? Oh, he said, um, he pretty much said that I was really gorgeous. Like, what? Why would he do that? Oh, that's okay, right? That's okay. Or let's say you're in a bar and some guy's trying to fuck your girlfriend. You try to take her away. And he's like, dude, what's your problem? And you're like, what you doing, man? It's my girlfriend. What? Don't you do that to other guys? Don't you cock block other guys? Don't you 
Don't you do that to your own friends? What? What's the problem, dude? I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to talk to your girl. What's your problem? So even though she wasn't my girlfriend, and even though I probably had no chance of meeting her, so what? And you're supposed to be my friend. The one girl I want to talk to, he did that once we were walking around the mall. There was this blonde girl that said something to her. She's working in a store. I said, I'm going to ask her for a number. He said, okay, but if you're not going to do it, then I'm going to do it. And I said, I said, damn, I was like, all these girls in the mall, the one girl I want to talk to, I said, all right, we'll do it then. He said, no, no, I'm not going to do it, but I'm saying, if you're not going to do it, then I'll do it. I said, that makes no sense. Look, just do it. So we went into the store, and he got real nervous, and he didn't do it, and then I didn't end up doing it, even though I know I had the balls to do it, because his bitch ass said he was going to do it, and he didn't. So I already told you how I ended the friendship with that dude, but that was one of the things that stuck in my head. He was just a cock block, man. I was like, you got all these girls you talking to. You have girls even interested and attracted to you. You have girls interested in coming over your place and even, you know, hooking up with you. And you're going to sit there and you call me a friend. You not even you, you have no respect for me whatsoever. So pretty much I said, look, can you do me a favor? Even if you think I'm being ridiculous, can you not do that again? I mean, seriously, I, I don't I don't appreciate that. I don't like that. And I don't even think he apologized. He just said, okay, I won't do it again. I won't do it again. But he didn't even say sorry. So in his mind, he think, oh, he's acting crazy and stuff. It's like, you don't see why that would bother somebody? I mean, I never did that to a guy once. I never cock-blocked a guy in my life, even in my PUA days. And that's what I'm going to talk about now. So that was being cock-blocked by your own friend. And I was going to say, if you have a friend, an actual friend, not a PUA wingman you just randomly met... You're probably off better off having a better wingman, but even your actual friends will cock block you. This is what guys do. So I started meeting these wingmen back in like 2000, I would say, might have been 2009. I started meeting these dudes. So from like 2009 into like 2000, I don't know, 16 or some shit. And I've been cock blocked before. I had one dude, I was hanging out with this uh, older dude. And he, we were in a bar, and I opened up these two girls. He stood right in front of me and boxed me out. Now, we all know in the PUA thing, the number one rule is do not cock block your buddy. That's supposed to be the number one rule. Well, for these wingmen, like if a guy wants to be your wingman, pretty much what he's saying is, hey, dude, I don't give a fuck about you. I don't care if you live or die. Pretty much what I'm trying to do is I, I need you to help me get laid. I don't care if you get laid, but... I need you to help me get laid. That's pretty much what these guys do. So I got pissed and I walked out the bar and left them there. And I needed to cool down. So I went to this other bar. He texted me. He was like, why are you acting this way, man? You being you being a baby and stuff. Come back. And I said, I said, dude, I opened them. Are you going to stand in front of me like that? I said, you, you didn't even include me in the conversation. You didn't even say, hey, this is my friend or something. You just box me out. Like, I don't even exist. Like, I'm some regular dude. Aren't we together? Aren't we hanging out? He's like, oh, relax, man, come back. So I came back, and the two girls were laughing because they didn't know what happened. They saw me leave, and I couldn't find him. He's like, you're overreacting. I said, dude, I said, I opened them. I said, even if there's rules and stuff, he was like, you don't own them. That's the same guy the last time. I said, no, it's not about them. I'm not saying I own them. Like, I didn't say you couldn't talk to them. If I said, hey, you can't talk to them, I open them, then yeah, that's me acting like I own them. I didn't say you couldn't talk to them. I said, why did you have to box me out? Couldn't you just... You know, come over and say, hey, what's up? This is my friend. How you doing? And get in the conversation and stand next to me. You stood right in front of me. He was like, you can't be acting this way and everything. And then and then once again, then when you call people out on this stuff, then guys go, you're crazy. You're crazy, man. You're crazy, man. You, 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 why are you acting this way, man? You're weird. You're being a baby, man. It's like, yeah, I'm being a fucking baby. Because you, you're not showing any kind of loyalty or any kind of respect towards me. So... I had another time with this Indian dude. He was the worst fucking wingman. He had like some weird ass name. He had these ugly ass unibrows. And I was hanging out with him. And I opened up these two girls. And he kind of did the same thing. He came over and said, oh Josh, I was looking all over for you. And he pretty much took over the whole conversation. He did that shit to me like twice. And I was fucking pissed. I mean, I never hung out with him again. I think I saw him like a year later. He had like a girlfriend. And like another year later, he kind of tried talking to me and said, hey, remember me? And I said, yeah. But... There's a lot of shitty... Most guys are not good wingmen. They don't give a fuck about you. Seriously. And then on top of that... One of the things I don't miss... About going to bars... I mean, I still go to bars. But I don't approach girls anymore. One of the things I don't miss... 
is random dudes would cock block me. And as I said before, I would never cock block another guy. Even if I saw a girl I really wanted, I would wait for him to get done talking to her, and then I would approach her. But guys are weird. I've had so many guys just not do anything. Like, they wouldn't even approach, right? And then as soon as I approach, they look at me and go, oh, he looks like a regular dude. He ain't better looking at me. They would just come over and cock block me. And because I went out by myself 90% of the time, groups of dudes would cock block me. They would, like, I would open and they would just box me out because it was easy because I was by myself. And I'm not the type of guy to fight unless I have to. So I'm not going to get into a fight, especially over some girl that's not going to fuck. I mean, she's not going to fuck him either anyway. She's not going to fuck anybody. So I'm not going to get into a fight over it. And I've had so many dudes do that to me. And I never thought once of cock blocking a guy. I never thought once, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over and I'm going to fuck his approach up. That's such a bitch move. There's so many guys out there. They're such bitches. They, they don't have the balls to approach, and then you see some guy like me with some balls, and then they're like, okay, now I'll go over. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Yeah, now I'll approach. I'll box him out. I'll, I'll cock block him. She's not going to fuck me. Hey, she shouldn't fuck him either. All right, I'll go in. I'll mess it up for the guy. It's like, why are you such a fucking insecure bitch? Go talk to a fucking... There's tons of girls out here. Why do you have to talk to the one girl I'm talking to, especially when you weren't talking to her in the first place? Go talk to some girls and quit being a fucking bitch. So, it's one of the things I don't like about guys. Every guy's gonna say, I'm your friend, man. I'm your brother, man. You're my best friend. And then, when it comes to, like I said, not even good pussy, they would just do anything. They would push you off a cliff just to try to get some pussy. So, I've I, I had a lot of wingman and stuff over the years, and either they don't approach, and then the ones they do approach, like I said, and then, and then I told this story before in my live stream, I think, I met this weird ass dude, he was still using mystery method, now mystery method, I would say, in my city, it became outdated in like 2010 or 11, I, I used it like my first year in pickup, like 2009, and then it, we were all realized it doesn't work. The method may work, but it's too complicated. It takes too long. And you can't really have a natural conversation. And you can't really build natural growth towards yourself. Because you're just being this mystery, mysterious pickup artist guy. So I met this blonde dude. I think I met him off this website called the Attraction Forums. Where it was Love Systems. Some of the guys who used to know Mystery Method came up with another method. It's supposed to be like Mystery Method, but more simple, more direct, and more fun. And this dude messaged me looking for a wingman. He had like a weird name too. He was a white guy, blonde hair dude. He, he wore a suit, and he put two different colognes on. He put one cologne on his wrist and another cologne on his other wrist. And his opener was, he would open girls and say, Hey, can I get your paint on something? Which cologne sm smells better? It kind of looked like he had chloroform on his wrist. Probably what he did. So we go inside this bar, and I open up these two girls, and he came over, and he stood, like, behind them or something. He stood, like, facing away from them, because he wanted me to bring them in. And I should have just walked away. But I said, oh, by the way, I was I was being a good wingman. My mistake. I said, oh, this is my buddy, and I said his name. So he starts talking to this one girl. He's doing a magic trick and everything, and he gets her phone number. And he got a phone number because of me. He came in my approach. And he'd even worry about me once again, like most guys, very unloyal. Didn't even worry about me getting a phone number. Got himself a phone number and then just left. So we leave the bar. We're going to this other bar. And it was kind of dead. And there was like two girls sitting down. I said, open that girl right there. Now, I didn't force him. I didn't put a gun to his head. But I said, hey, go open that girl right there. So he goes over and the girl blew him out. And he comes over and goes, I don't like hanging out with you. I said, huh? What'd I do to you? He said, oh, you don't follow the method. I don't like this. That girl was fucking ugly as shit. I said, I didn't force you to do it. I was just trying to help you. I got you a phone number. He said, no, no, no. I got myself a phone number. So I got so fucking mad. I wanted to bitch slap him. I walked out the bar and he said, look, don't get upset. I don't want to argue. I said, I said, look, don't fucking. I was like, you went inside my approach. You got a phone number. He's like, no, no I got myself. I said, yeah, I brought you in. I was like, you wouldn't even open those two You didn't do shit. You were just standing there. And then I got you a fucking phone number. And then you're going to sit there and say, you got it yourself, which you didn't. And then on top of that, you're mad because some girl blow you out. It happens. You're going to get blown out. I didn't fucking do it. She did it. Yell at her. And he said, oh, calm down, calm down. So we still hung out for the night. Then I think he messaged me. 
two days later said, hey, give me some feedback. And I said, you know, you seem like a nice guy and all, but I was like, I, I felt disrespected what you did. And I said, you know, I, I told him mystery method's outdated and people don't really use it. And I said, I don't, I think it's best we just go on raise. I think you're better off hanging out with somebody else. And he said, all right, I respect your opinion. Thanks. He was polite. You know, he was polite about it. But that shit pissed me off. There's guys that I actually have helped before. I want to say I got them laid, but I've gotten them phone numbers. And not once have they ever said thank you. Not once. Like, there's no respect, no loyalty, nothing. So you're never going to find it. Any guy who says, I'll be a wingman. I'll get you laid. It's like, no, you're not. Not one guy has ever gotten me laid in my life. There's not one guy even got me a makeout. Everything I got, I got myself. All the bar makeouts I got, I got because I opened the girl. And they were mostly mostly drunk. And I got close to their face and I kissed them and we made out. I got it myself. No guy's ever gotten me a makeout. No guy's gotten me a phone number. So as years went on, I realized I can do this shit myself. Having a wingman is very utilizing. But you don't need a fucking wingman when every wingman is going to cock block you. Every wingman is going to fucking snap on you, turn on you. And then on top of that, the one main guy I was hanging out with years ago, me and him used to hang out. And he used to be on my dick in the sense that he would text me in whatever area I was in. He would, he would come out. He'd be like, hey, you want to be in Old City tonight or Center City? I would say one or the other. He would just follow me and meet me. Then when he found RSD, that's when I want to talk about RSD next. RSD changed wingman, uh, whatever you want to call it, wingmanship or the wingman method. It really ruined it. It made it worse to mystery method. So this guy, he found RSD and then he he, he started getting cocky. He's got a few results because he used to not be able to approach. And then he, one day he was bragging and I told him off. I said, yeah, you ditched me and stuff. He was like. Oh, man, you need to learn some respect and everything. What are you talking about? I was just messaging you to say that I did. I said, yeah. I was like, and you ditched me. We used to hang out, and then now you got all these RSD friends. Now you don't want to hang out with me no more. I was like, you're like everybody else. I'm so sick of people doing that shit to me. And he's like, no, calm down, man. And then I saw him in person, and we, we still kind of hang out to this day. Um, he's some, he, did it, he did my podcast on my regular channel, for those of you who listened to that. He did it once. He was on this the segment where I go out at night. But... You know, I called him out for that, but RSD ruined the wingman. Because, like, Mystery Method was cheesy, but at least Mystery Method had some structure to it. In a sense, Mystery Method would have cheesy shit. Like, all right, so does there's, there's that I would approach two girls. I would open. And a guy would say to me, okay, I'm going to come over and say, hey, dude, you need a drink. If I say, yeah, that means stay. But if I say, no, I'm good, that means leave me alone. So that was more simple. And even though it was kind of cheesy, like there was codes and stuff, at least there was some kind of, uh, there, you know, there was some kind of teamwork. There was some kind of utilizing each other versus RSD is just like, all right, we're just going to hang out for the first 20, 30 minutes of the night, use each other to build social momentum, and then that's it. We split up and we don't care. We don't see each other. You can do that, but that's not really working together. That's not really teaming up. That's not really utilizing each other. So RSD kind of ruined the wingmanship. And then I started, I, I knew a couple guys in RSD. I was going to this place in Center City. It became the RSD layer of douchebags because this one guy liked this place and it's fucking terrible. It's called Ladder 15. It's in Center City. They charge five bucks to get in. You have to be 23. That's how douche this place is. You have to be 23 to get in. I never heard of that shit before in my life. 21? No, you have to be 23, which means if you're 21, you have to wait two years to go in some fucking douchebag place. It's like, why? That's ridiculous. So, the places, I, I've been kicked out of there twice. i never been kicked out of a bar. I had times where I was dancing on tables, dancing on couches, I was grinding on girls, making out with girls, fingering girls. I was doing all types of shit. Never been kicked out of a bar, but I got kicked out because the guy said, you seem kind of drunk. And I was like, isn't this a bar? I, like, I didn't even have nothing to drink, and a guy kicked me out. Then another night, I asked the guy if uh, I can bring a Christmas hat in the front. He said, yeah. And then this short, fidget-looking fuck. He kind of looked like Tyler for, Tyler from RSD if he was fatter. He got in my face and said, take that hat off right now. Like he was going to do something. I'm like, you fucking fat, fidget fuck. I'll kick your fucking ass. You're not tough. You're just a little short fuck that thinks he's, he's just mad at life because you're too short to get pussy. Fuck yourself. But this became the RSD layer. It's so douchey. And the guy that was hanging out, I just told you about, 
that we had to argue that I had to argue with that I still kind of got now. He liked the place because he said, "Yeah, man, uh, if you could break the girls down, it becomes real easy. If you can just break them down, they're all stuck up. These girls were the most stuck up cunts. I mean, if you want to go to a bar and meet the most stuck up cunts in the world, go to this bar. I mean, the most nasty, stuck up, arrogant." Maybe not all of them, but let's say 90, 97, 90%. I mean, just terrible. And he would go there. And so all the RSD guys, I guess, that he met, he would bring them there. And then there were some dating coaches from Love Systems that would go there, underground guys. And it became the douchebag pickup. If you go there on a Saturday night, half the guys there are pickup artists. And they're all doing the hand of God. They're all fucking practicing their salsa moves they learned from Tyler. They're all doing their douchebag routines. I mean, the place is just fucking... Do- and, so, and the bouncers kick them out sometimes. It's one of these bars where the bouncers, they see you doing, like, creeping people out. And actually banned the guy that I was talking about. Because he they, they asked him, say, you know this guy? It was like some creepy guy was bothering the girls. He said, yeah. He said, you're banned. He said, what'd I do? He said, because you know all these guys. And most of the guys we kick out, you know... You're with. And he said, but I didn't do anything. He said, it doesn't matter. You're bringing him in. So they banned him. I think he's unbanned now. Well, they banned him for years. And that was his main spot. But this place was so fucking douchey. And I almost got into a fight one night. Because one of these RSD guys, he told me to open this girl. She was by herself, this white girl. And I made a direct approach. I went to her and I said, hey, I think you're really sexy or something. And then it was a black guy and a white guy. And... It was the white guy's girlfriend, but the black guy wanted to fight me. He, had his, he was like biting on his lip, and I put my hand out to shake his hand. I said, hey, dude, what's up? I didn't know that was your girl. And he was like, nah, I don't want to shake your hand. I said, you going to hit me? I was like, you going to hit you going to fight me over somewhere? I was like, he was like, yeah, well, you try to you try to talk to my buddy's girl as soon as he walked away. I said, I didn't even see her with the guy. I just saw a girl by herself. And then the white guy was like, it's okay, dude. You're right. She is attractive. But the white guy was a pussy because he was going to let his boy handle it. You know, he wasn't going to handle it himself. He was some skinny little faggot. He had to get his, you know, his boy, his big black bouncer to beat me up because he couldn't do it himself. So they walked away. And then the guy who who told me to do that, he didn't even get, he didn't even stick up for me. He ran away. He didn't even come over and say, hey, man, I'm sorry. You know, it was my fault. You know, we're cool. Um, I told him to do it. I didn't realize she was with you. He didn't even stick up for me. He just left me there. So there's no, there's no uh, working together. There's no friendship. There's no camaraderie. It's just nonsense. It's just fucking weird dudes using other dudes to try to get laid. It's like anything else in life. It's about value. And then you got guys who fucking suck. You have guys who are fucking terrible. Like, I could at least open. I couldn't connect with girls because I wasn't attractive. But I could at least open them. That was my strength. You have guys who fucking can't even open. And they want to hang out with the best guys. They're like, I want to hang out with the best guys. I want to hang out with the guys who get laid. I want to hang out with the guys who get tense. Like, you can't even fucking approach, you pussy. Then I met some guys who took some boot camps before, and they told me that it helped them. But some of those guys ended up plateauing. Like, one guy, he took this boot camp in Hawaii, and he seemed pretty good. But see, he's a tall, above-average-looking white guy, so he doesn't need game but I saw him one night. He was like sitting down at this bar by himself. He was with his wing member, like, come on, dude. Come on, dude, approach. And he looked like depressed. He was on a cry or something because he was plateauing. But some guys who, you know, took. And then the guy I talked about, I made a video on this channel. You guys probably, it's, it's, uh, I forgot the title. The title was A Guy Once Told Me This. And it was the weird depressed guy I talked about. The guy that said that he was, uh, girls should have to have sex with you. It should be a law. He used to say weird shit like that. That was the weirdest fucking wingman ever had. I hung up with this guy for months. That guy I met from uh, a layer meeting in Philly. He was—he seemed like a normal guy, but he was on medication. And then he would mostly approach black girls. That was what he was, he was into. And he was real fucking meted up. And he would, he would just ruin my night. He would talk about killing himself and jumping off bridges and stuff. And driving, swerving on the highway and stuff. He was just a weird dude. And then I guess he got his shit together and he just stopped talking to me. Like he get like he moved out of his mom's house because he was in his thirties, and then he um he got a decent job. He got fired because they said he was grubbing, <laughs> he was grabbing his crotch or something. Probably was. He was a weird dude. And then he got another job. And then I ran to him like a year or two ago in Old City, and I was like, "Hey, you remember me?" And he was like, "Yeah, of course." And he was like, uh, "What's up? You still do PUA?" And I told him, "Nah, I quit, but I still go out and stuff." And he said, "Yeah, I don't really approach anymore either." But you know, 
he was decent looking enough. He was a tall white guy and he used to be kind of chubby, but he got in, he got, he lost the weight. So, you know, he's decent looking enough to get some girls and he, he only went after black girls really. That was his thing. And, um, but yeah, I, I've had tons and tons of wingman over the years and I'm telling you, man, um, most of them, only like three, I would say I connected with maybe three. One of them was an Asian dude who recently, he moved to New York a few years ago. He kind of grew on me when I first met him. He was kind of weird. He would stand too close to me and he would complain about everything. But then he started loosening up. He started being more touchy-feely with girls. He started being more normal. It was pretty fun to hang out. He had a good sense. But he moved to New York a few years ago. And ironically, when I went out to New York years ago to take my trip, he was out there. I ran into him. We hung out for the night. And then there was this, uh, the thing I just told you about, I still hang out with him, but he wants me, he, he knows I'm a MGTOW, which is funny. He, um, he invited me to hang out with him last night. He knows I'm MGTOW, and he hangs out with me sometimes. Every once I invite me out with his friends, he's like, he's like, come on, man, dance, come on, approach. I'm like, he think, he actually texted me a few weeks ago. He said, I think you're going to start approaching again. I told him, I said, only most average dudes are not getting laid. And then on top of that, you know, your girls are just, they're not going to have sex with anybody. I've been out, I go out every single week, at least once a week. I don't see girls hooking up with guys. I don't see girls jumping in cars with guys. It's just not happening. It's a waste of time. And, uh, good, I got up last night, but I stayed in. And then, um, there was one more wingman. Um, there was a short Asian dude. He used to, he used to, he was an approach machine. He always approached. He got kicked out of a few bars. Um, he was very short. He had to be like five, two. He was in decent shape, too. He had a good job. He worked in IT as a programmer. He lived in the city, but he, uh, the girls just weren't attracting him. Was like, but he made tons of approaches, and he was an approach machine. I never, even more than me. Like, he was just a monster. But there was a few wingmen that I had that were, you know, decent, and I had fun with, but most of them were just, you know, either okay, or a lot of them were just fucking weird and creepy. And there was one more wing guy I was going to talk about. But I kind of forgot because I was talking about the the press guy and the other guy. If I can think of it before the time I wrap this show up, I'll I'll talk about it. But I run I run into these guys sometimes. Oh yeah, so the other guy I talk about last guy, I still run into him. He's an RSD guy. He doesn't do shit. He doesn't approach. He doesn't do nothing. And when I first met him, he said he went to Mexico and he saw. He said a lot of the Mexican guys just take up space and it's alpha. He said, so let's do that. Let's just stand next to each other to take up space. I was like, that's kind of weird to just stand next to a guy and just take up space. And that's what we did the night we hung out. We just talked and we took up And it didn't work, sure enough. And he never approaches. He watches all the RSD videos. He knows all the tricks. He knows all the, you know, all the lines. But all he does is just stand there and he just fucking, he just checks his phone all night. One night I try to help him. I said, let me get your phone. I'll put it away. He's like, no, no, no. I said, why are you scared? Uh, and then he um, he told me that he made a bet with a guy. He has 30 days to get laid. And I was like, it's not going to happen. He's like, no, it's going to happen. He's like, I'm going to go into a supermarket and stuff. And he didn't make no approaches. And he ended up giving a guy like 100 bucks. But he's a weird guy too. And then we stopped hanging out. And then now, you know what I realized? One last thing to wrap it up about wing guys. Years ago when I used to approach, a lot of the RSD guys didn't want to hang out with me. They thought I was weird. Because I went out by myself without them. And I approached. Now that I don't approach anymore, now these guys all of a sudden want to hang out with me. Now all of a sudden, they want to, you know, they like, hey man, come on, hang out with us. And even the guy just talked about who I'm kind of cool with, he wants to hang out now. But when I was going out doing my own thing, none of them wanted to hang out. So I realized they were just jealous because I didn't need them. And now that I don't approach anymore, they think like I need them. And it's like, I don't need, I can, I can turn it on. I can approach a girl, I can say fucking anything, I'm crazy. But it's just not worth it, they're not going to fuck me. I'm not giving him any attention. And as I said, I put fucking 10 plus years in this shit and it just doesn't work. But anyways, that was my episode about uh, wingmen. If you have any uh, PUA stories, if you have any experiences about wingmen or even college buddies or high school buddies or cock blocking or backstabbing or any of that stuff, feel free to put in the comment section. And uh, thanks for listening. This has been another installment of Pod Jacked.